Hello everyone, welcome back to the Chibi Cornet YouTube channel and today I'm going to teach you how to use Crayola watercolors. So for this video I used Artist Loft watercolor paper and they're 90 pounds. I used Crayola watercolors. Some paint brushes. Some pencils, and a pencil sharpener. So for this first drawing, I referenced a photo off of Google of lilacs. I figured doing one realistic drawing and another more relaxed cartoon drawing would kind of show the diverse ways you can use Crayola watercolors. So at the start of this, I'm sketching with an HB pencil. And just to let you know, you aren't required to use good drawing pencils or sketching pencils. Um, these are a gift that I got a long time ago, but you're more than welcome to use whatever materials you have. I like to often use mechanical pencils just make sure that you don't press down too hard and that the marks are light. Now you're going to see later in the video that I go over my line art with 4B pencil and it's way darker. So for some reason, whenever I go over my line art with a 4B pencil, it doesn't mix with the watercolor and make the watercolor muddier at all. So that's why I like to use these pencils. So while using Crayola watercolors, I like to do a light wash first just to get the basic foundation in and so that even if I were to use highlights, it won't just be the white paper being used as highlights. Of course, you are able to do that, but it's just a personal preference just so I can add a little more depth into my drawings. Remember to swatch your colors before you apply it to your illustration. This way you can avoid any mistakes and make sure that it is the color that you want.
So after that first layer is dried, I go back in with a second layer. And as you can see, I leave certain areas untouched. And that's for the highlights of the flower. And just as a reminder, make sure that each layer is dry before you go back in. Because if you go in too quickly, you're going to get blotchy results. And Crayola watercolors are especially sensitive. Remember that whenever you're layering with Crayola watercolors, don't oversaturate your brush with water and a lot more um, pigment on it than water. As you can see, I'm using a light pink color for the lilacs, even though lilacs don't really have pink in them. It gives it a little bit of pop and I feel that it complements the purple color of the lilacs. Not to mention it gives it a bit of a depth. So don't be afraid to experiment in ways like this. All in all, it's a learning process and you'd be surprised how it can actually improve your artwork. Another thing to keep in mind is that since these are cheaper watercolors, you're going to have to go back multiple times to try and add more detail and to make sure certain areas pop out. I believe I did about roughly four layers. I could be wrong. I think I did about four or five layers. And that's just to make sure that I get as much detail in there. Watercolor is a time-consuming medium, but I do think it's really worth it. And it's certainly a forgivable medium if you... <laughs> if you know what you're doing and you're taking certain precautionary steps. Now for the second drawing, I did a cute watermelon illustration. This was just to show that you can get really nice flat washes with Crayola and that it's not always about making realistic drawings. You can make great artworks. So I start off with a light wash mixed with red and yellow and water down a lot. And then while the paper is still wet, I go back with more red color. And this is what's called blotching, I believe. I could be completely wrong. <laughs> Don't quote me on that. But whenever you do this, um, it 
kind of the watercolor blooms because the paper is so damp from all the water and I just really like the effect of it and I wanted to show this as like the inside of the watermelon. For the watermelon itself, I start off with a light wash of green and yellow. Let that dry and then I go back in with this dark green. And if you're wondering how to make darker greens, instead of mixing the green with the blue, which is normally how that works, I decided to mix it with red and it created a darker green. So that's it for the tutorial. There's really nothing else more for me to say. I really hope that this tutorial helped you in some way and guides you in some way. I'm sorry if I wasn't able to explain myself properly and I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you like this video then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you guys next week. Bye!